hello there and welcome. Oh, it's, it's, can't, wants to start all over again. Welcome to 2019. Wow, we're finally back together. How was your New Year's? Did you make any pledges that you intend to keep or have you already fallen off the wagon like I did? Uh, no worries. Head over to my new site, rentabeliever.com, and I'm happy to help you accomplish any goal that you have in mind. I promise. You know, I expected to be here a couple of weeks ago. There's been a lot of colds and flus and other viruses attacking uh, folks and guests. So unfortunately, my first guest of the 2019, Dr. Judy Orloff, did have to reschedule, but you will meet her in February, probably a little bit later in the month. So that's going to be great. Uh, today, however, I'm very excited to introduce you to a gentleman uh, who has been totally unstoppable in his journey. He's a father who refuses to say goodbye to his son. Instead, he searched for ways to say hello. On the morning of January 3rd, 2016, Joseph McQuillan received a phone call that all parents dread and hope will never ever come. His son Christopher was missing. Hours later, that first call had been upgraded. Christopher McQuillan was no longer missing. He was tragically deceased. He drowned in a boating accident with three of his friends. Now, Joe McQuillan's grief took him down a road less traveled. He reached out to mediums, psychics, anyone who could specialize in bridging that metaphysical world with this one. Someone who could be a conduit for his son, a way to communicate with Christopher. And his journey became a book titled My Search for Christopher on the Other Side. And this is his story. So come with me and meet Joe. Joseph, <laughs> welcome Hi. to the show. Hi, Frankie. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm really, um, you know, as I said, it was a wonderful book. And like you said, you co-wrote it with, with Christopher. You had uh, copious notes from everybody that you had engaged with. And, and so that was really, um, it was good to see so much detail in there. So let, let's just get a little bit about your background because you're not somebody who was driven to meet psychics your whole life, and, no, you know, this, going to mediums after medium. I, I did not expect to be... Uh, sitting here talking to you, I didn't expect to write a book. Uh, you know, I expected to greet my son on Christmas morning with a hug and a kiss and I love you. Uh, and almost three years later, or it's been three years, January 3rd, um, that didn't happen. So, uh, no, I'm not. I'm a blue collar kid from Buffalo, New York, youngest of uh, 10, uh, raised in a wonderfully happy, dysfunctional family. Uh, <laughs> You know, and uh, I was grateful to, to marry the uh, love of my life. She still takes my breath away and have three wonderful kids, and one of them happens to be on the other side. So uh, Christopher's my oldest, and we had this very strong connection. He was uh, he had a lot of traits like his old man, good and bad. And when, uh, when he crossed, I needed to find out if there was a way to connect with him. And if, uh, if mediums, the other side, uh, you know, meditation would work. Wonderful. If not, let's scratch it off the list and figure out what's out there. Um, and it led me down a road of, uh, of, of, of search and, and finding and comfort and heartbreak um, that culminated in a book that I never intended to write. You know, we all grieve in, in different ways. And you are fortunately still with your wife because a lot of couples don't survive this kind of tragedy. 80%. 80%. You know, and we, we grieve separately. We grieve differently. Um, you know, her, the, her relationship with Christopher was intense and wonderful, as was mine, different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we were always supportive and there for each other. You know, uh, she has faith on the same sort of, of, of mindset that I do. She, she first met Rebecca Rosen, and, and that kind of kick-started me into, into going forward with this thing. So, um, you know, it, it's not like I'm having conflict on the home front you know there's right. we're, we're, we're we're involved in this thing and neither one of us were ready to let go of our baby boy of our, of our oldest you know so um and i'm going to tell you it's, you read it in the book it's it we can't compare with an i love you dad how are you a hug or a kiss but it's the only game in town and i wasn't ready to take on a world that was devoid of my christopher you know and i don't have to and i've got messages from him that he'll be with me doing these things I'm starting a second book already, but he'll be with me doing these things until I cross over. And then the minute I stop across the threshold, he'll be there, you know, so it's a good deal. So did, did you get the sense, because um, you're learning a lot about this metaphysical world. Right. So as you know, we, we all come here with a purpose. Right. And, and Christopher's purpose may have been to set you on your journey to do what you're doing in this lifetime, because you never expected him to 
to last that long over here. He wasn't happy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got, I'll tell you one thing, as sad as this is and as tough as this is for a parent, I got to be his dad on this side for 21 years and I get to continue to be his dad through this connection. And I'll get to continue to be his dad when I cross over because I've researched, I've talked to, I've reached out to mediums. How will that work? How will that look? How will, you know? And so, you know, when people say, oh my God, I feel so sorry for you. It's like, listen, I got the greatest job in the world for 21 years. You know, I feel sorry for you. You didn't get to be his dad, you know? So um, I'll take what I can get, you know? And I don't get to rewind it and say, it could go this way because it didn't. You know, he had a... You know, I'll tell you this, that and I've been sober for 33 years. So, you know, and nobody stopped drinking because it was working so well. You know, I was a wild man and, and had more fun than barrels of monkeys. And when it was time to stop, it was time to stop. But it gave me to establish a relationship with a higher power. You know, and call it whatever you want. God, spirit, Yahweh, whatever. the great spirit, whatever. You know, it's all that energy source of that, that puts us together. So every night I would get on my knees after he crossed. And I'd say, thank you for my sobriety. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my health. But I'm PO'd. You know, you took my kid. And I'd go to bed and toss and turn. And about after the third night, I got a message while I was sleeping. And it was clear as a bell. It said, I didn't take your son. You know, your son's recklessness caused him to cross early. You know, he had free will. Mm -hmm. You know, I welcomed him home. I'm glad he's here. But I I don't move you guys around like chess pieces. You know, so understand that. And he also let it known that he lost a son too, and that he was the person carrying me when I couldn't keep going during that first week. You know, somehow I got it all done from funeral arrangements to burials to receptions. I had some wonderful friends, you know, in tow. His godfather, yeah. Michael, was with me every minute. And, and, we, and, and it all got done. But to think that I really did that, is is naive i know that something was holding me up so god and i made peace there once i figured out he was an advocate he didn't take my kid and then i knew he was with this good guy yeah yeah so so you know so let's go forward and figure out what all that's about right so the first the first medium that you reached out to was nancy was she the first one nancy myers and she's in if you're out there in uh arizona she's in surprise arizona and i and I'm going surprise, out. surprise, your son. So, yeah, surprise, everybody. <laughs> surprise. Well, she, she surprised me more than once. And, yeah. Uh, yeah and so amazing. I saw her 20 years before this on some whim, some quest, some something. I don't know. Somebody, so I thought I'd check it out. And, and the first, and remember, I didn't have this intensity to, to meet anybody. My, yeah. my parents were gone and I loved them, but they left in a kind of a normal state of time. Um, and I believed in the other side the same way I believe in the Secretary of the Interior, right? But doesn't mean I had any cannot contact or any real interest on what they do. So, yeah. uh, so I reached out to Nancy and, and we had a, a session in probably 30, 45 minutes. And I'm kind of checking my watch going, yeah, I got to get back to work, you know. And then she said, your dad's here. And he's showing me a caboose and telling me railroad. And it was like, bam, a bell rang. We, we, you know, my old man spent 40 years on the railroad. He was yeah. a union guy, most seniority between Buffalo and Syracuse. Every boy in the family worked on the railroad during college. My grandfather was a railroader. My beloved Uncle Bill was a railroader. We're a railroad family. If you were to look behind my desk on top, you'd see a railroad lantern because that's who we are. You know, we're, we're from that kind of steel. And, yeah. uh, and so when she said, your old man showing me a canoe, a caboose and saying railroad, and that's it. The old man didn't tell me the secret to the universe. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't tell me who's going to win the third race at aqueduct. He didn't do it. He just let me know that he was there and that's it. Yeah. So I took that info. I put it in my filing cabinet in my brain and moved on 16, 17 years later, I needed to draw on that. And I called her and we had a, some wonderful sessions that was very much Chris. She knew exactly without any knowledge. And remember, when we did this in 2000, there's no Google search. My dad yeah. wasn't famous, you know, and there was no way to connect those dots. So when she connected this, the dots with Christopher and the boys who crossed, it was once again, it was like a, a bolt of energy. And I'm holding on to dear life just to connect with him, you know, and, and the things that came through were just absolutely amazing so and i'm sure she told you i'm sure she told you that as a as a new spirit usually they don't come through right away right 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 that's like she she did that she said yeah 
it's kind of stunning. And, and she said exactly that, that, you know, he, she said he's an old spirit. He's very advanced. This isn't his first rodeo. That's why he's able to connect like this. Mm -hmm. And as we connected more, it even got more intense. And, and what happened is as good as that was, it's kind of like, you know, having a long distance romance, right? You know, Frankie, you know, it, it's, it's satisfying, but I want to look in the face of somebody looking at my son. Right. So that's when I, I decided to seek out somebody closer and do a face-to-face -face and, and check that out. You know, I was hungry for more. So then you went to see? Well, I went to see a young lady that I knew, and, and it, was, it was fine on his birthday. I didn't feel a monster connection. But then I looked up and sought out uh, 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 Andrew Anderson, uh, websites of, you know, rating in the state of Illinois, and the cat was 20 minutes away from me. So I, I, I made a call and said, you know, heck, if, it, if, I, if I change my mind, I, I cancel. You know, he doesn't have a credit card number, you know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, and I walked in to see him, and, and I walked in the sitting room, of course. It's got all the pictures and, the, and the, the, you know, all the books and all the stones, and it's like, you know, like some cosmic waiting room. You yeah, know? Spirit so, 101. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like and I really say, I said, is there a cosmic decorator, the Elsa scrap? <laughs> Amazon.com for, 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 for mediums. Yeah. I went in and, and he, he, we sat down and got a little acclimated. And he looked at me and he said, Christopher's here. Oh, my God, he's beautiful. He looks like Brad Pitt. He said, uh, why do I see you planting something? What would you plant today? That morning, I had decided I'd go to the office where I saw him and and went to his grave now i had moved him from one grave over you read that i, I moved read that. Yeah, yeah yeah you didn't like I, it <laughs> I didn't like it i was annoyed to me it was like going to a hotel and having a bad view right i'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> paying too much money so um the, the lovely people uh charged me a half price so you, you ended up buying a family plot right i bought three. Oh, three. three. So okay i moved him over one i'm taking the one that's on the outside He's taking the one, and Sally's taking the one on the other side of our boy. So nobody's going to occupy the spot he was in. I just right. didn't like him that close to anybody else. And these Sheridans are, I'm told, lovely people, but I, I go there all the time. And yeah. I just didn't want it looking like they were his kids, right? Or he was their kid. So right, right. I moved them over. And because they had moved them over, this was in June, there was a bunch of loose dirt. So I planted shamrocks around his grave. And he said, Christopher acknowledges you were planting something for him today. And then he said, and you're wearing a bracelet he gave you. And under my cuff, I had a bracelet that I pulled out of my dresser that I hadn't looked at in, in, in 15 years, 18 years. And it was uh, from Disney World. We were there when Chris was a little boy, and, and it's goofy. It's a leather bracelet with, the word, with Goofy's face on it and said, Dad, he gave it to me. So Chris is acknowledging you're wearing a bracelet he gave you. And I opened, pulled my sleeve up and showed it to him. And I was hooked. It was like, boom. You know, this, this one, you know, nobody's, I'm not looking for anybody, you know, to try to do something, pull a fast one. I don't believe that happens anymore. This isn't, this isn't the days of the charlatans. You know, what we're doing on the internet dispels that if, if people were frauds, they, they get found out right away. And he was just amazing. And, con, and that was 10 minutes in and we had an hour reading and my head was spinning and it was amazing. And the information just kept coming. He knew that we celebrated his birthday in the way we always did, which was every kid gets to go to Rana, we go to Rana, Japan, the whole family to celebrate their birthday. And we did that, even though Christopher had crossed over. We, we let go balloons, we let go Chinese lanterns. He said, he acknowledges you let go balloons and he pointed to a poster with Chinese lanterns and that you, you let go those. You know, come on, there was nobody there but us, man. You know, so I looked in his face and I knew that he was looking at my kid. And I continue that relationship with Andrew. We're kind of pals now. You know, he's not going to be there tonight, but he was at a book signing I had right before Christmas. And, uh, and he's a wonderful medium, you know. So between him and another great medium, Sherry Jewell, who's a local gal who I just love. Um, I, I, you know, then some of the world famous ones, Thomas John, Rebecca Rosen. Everyone, everyone, Frankie, has come up and said, your son's here. And, and Rebecca Rosen, we were in, we were at a, there's 150 people in a hotel. We were smack dab in the middle. And I'm thinking, should I have sprung for VIP? You know, does, does that matter? Is there a VIP for the other side? 
she walked up and said, I see a connection with country music, which there was with he. He brought me into that new country stuff. We have a, a band that plays at his charity golf outing. It's us. It's, you know, and most of these guys are good musicians, and they let me strum along, but they won't let me plug in. But I don't hold it against them. <laughs> I don't hold it against them, Frank. That but, wasn't you singing the song. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, actually, you know, I do some of the singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Um, and we, we, we write some song music together, some music together with Brad let, let, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say, tell me the SoundCloud address for, for the song, the Feather song. Let me get back to you, but it's, I'll send you Feathers and I'll get the SoundCloud. I, like, I, I listened to it. I listened to it, but I just want We to wrote that. Cool. Actually, Bradley was singing that. Brad and I. Okay. Was, but actually, yeah. is a musician. And he and I wrote that together. Yeah. We wrote another one just recently. It went to the studio. It's called Old Grief and Love. And I'll send that to you. And it's it's And the amazing. one his friends wrote w was fantastic. The brothers? Stay put. And that's Stay the put. That, They are yeah. really good musicians. Yeah, they do this for a living, as, as does yeah. Brad and I. Sam, Sam actually was like a brother to, to Chris. And yeah. so uh, Sam called and said, you know, they're broke musicians. And when they travel the Midwest, they stay in our basement. And they kid around and say they should change the name of the band to the Basement Kids, you know, because. Nice. And, and they're like older brothers to my boy. And, and we, we just adore them. And Sam called and said, when Chris crossed, he said, you know, Mr. McHugh, I, I don't know what to do. I'd love to come in. I can't. I said, Sam, uh, you know, do me a favor, write a song for him. Yeah, it's a wonderful tribute. It's, it's a beautiful. wonderful tribute. You know, 2,000 people came to this kid's wake. Wow. 2,000. You know what? You'd have to give How, out. You'd, 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 have to give out people. you'd have to give out $100 bills to get 2,000 people at my wake. <laughs> But 2,000 people came to this guy's It's like Trump, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He's just like that. <laughs> Except without the fast food, okay? Yeah. Or the fake, the fake people. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> In more ways than one, Frankie, but that's okay. I know. I, you know, I used, to have a, I used to have a music show, too. So, did uh, you really? I, yeah, and I know that you, 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 you go to Crystal Beach every year. You did. Yeah, Chris, and, we still do, every year. Do you? And a really, really fantastic musician friend of mine moved there about, uh, probably about 10 years ago, too. And uh, Michael Pickett, I don't know if you've ever seen Michael or, or no, been around when please. he has his annual concert, but it's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I'll tell you something cool about Crystal Beach. It's just this amazing place. It used to be an artist community. Yep. Then it became a, an amusement park. They knocked down the amusement park and built these. And so there's 40 McQuillans take over the place in the first week of August. And it's kind of like an ADD festival. And, and it's, it's really great, you know, and, and we really just bond there. And it's lovely. And Chris loved it there because he loved being a McQuillan. You know, he loved being a McQuillan. You know, but I will tell you, when, Linda, when Rebecca Rosen came up to us, she said, you know, the country music, then she said, why do I see a, a, a dog named Cooper? A, 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 what's that about? Well, we name our band Frat Dog over because Christopher and this was the mascot of this Northern Illinois University, uh, AKL Frat. And he would take pictures with the guy dressed up. And no, I mean, how do you put that connection? The, yeah. What's the name with the dog Cooper? You know, so, I mean, those things have happened every single time. Last time we saw Thomas John, five of my family members came through we're, he's hour and a half straight about 30 minutes into it and he kept saying there's family one family these people keep showing up my wife elbowed me it's like your idiot family's here again you know and i had oh, they're all You're taking up all the room man yeah five, <laughs> five, we had 10 brothers and sisters what do you want <laughs> and he named five by name wow and that's said, phenomenal he said your son chris is here putting bunny ears behind your sister pat's head and i said yeah that's chris yeah. i don't want this to come off rude how much you money did you spend on psychics? Oh, you know what? Uh, how much money do I spend on golf, right? I mean, no, I'm just curious, like, you know, in the year, the two years that you were going, like, you know, yeah, I'm still going and I'll still yeah, write a check, you know, you know, so some of them, you know, guys like Thomas John, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty expensive. expensive. I think we had a private reading and Celia and I split, I think it was a G note, you know, wow. yeah. most readings are a couple hundred bucks yeah. for 45 minutes, right? Yep. You know, but I got you know, there's no right. luggage, there's no luggage racks on hearses, right? And if I didn't, you know, and I knew I was driven to something. And yeah. by the way, how much do you pay for therapy? How yeah, much do you exactly. pay for anything to soothe what's going on? But I want the audience to know this isn't, this isn't my way of placating my grief. This was really the connection. You know, yeah. how much would you spend to spend an hour with somebody that's loved and crossed? You know, David Gates from Bread wrote a song called Everything I Own. And it's about his dad. Yeah. Know, I give everything I own. You know, I was in Sarasota, Florida, visiting my wonderful sister, Marsha. Hi, Marsha. I adore her. She was Christopher's godmother. 
and she might not be long for this world. She might be transitioning. And and uh, and Christopher had promised me that, he, that the minute she walked across, he'd be there with Jerry and Pat. And 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 so I was visiting her, and I I went to the after dinner. We had a nice Chinese dinner, and I went down to the the beach in Naples to connect with Chris. And I get a message that said, you know, go to Sarasota. And I was like, oh, dude, it's late. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's four hours round trip. And I said, you know what, I'm going to look on the phone. And if the beach is closed, I'm not going. Uh, I look at the phone, open 24 hours, took Siesta Key, got in the car, you know, sorry, uh, rental car people with it, with a cigar and, wow. and some Febreze and, 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 and a couple <laughs> Red Bulls and headed up and, and walked on that beach where I'd been before and just felt my son next to me. And I was like, wow, do, you know, would I drive four hours to spend time with him? You bet, you bet I would. You know, you bet. You smoke a lot of cigars. What's your brand? You know, I, I like, it depends who's buying, by the way. So <laughs> I like Romeo and Juliet. I like, a, a, you know, they, there's a nice uh, a, a giant cigar, 60 ring gauge that I like a lot. And then an occasional Cuban cigar if, uh, if it's around, you know, uh, 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 you know, it depends on, 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 on what's out there. I'm not, I don't like a real strong cigar, but it is, you know, I don't drink. I don't, uh, I don't chase women. I don't really gamble ever. So, you know, it's, I'm not giving up the one vice. I'm I guess it's cigars. There's the title of your next book. <laughs> yeah. Or at least a song. <laughs> yeah. That's a good song. It's like yeah. cigars. Hard to say fast. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I love it. So not only did you go and, and, you know, immerse yourself in this, in this, with, with the psychics, but you also are teaching yourself. You're teaching yourself. You're doing automatic writing. You are learning to cleanse your area. You're learning to ground yourself. You're learning to communicate yourself. How is that going for you? Well, it's great. And and once again, I, I wish I taught myself. I, you know, I, I had a dog one time that was just the dog before this Labrador. It was just a wonderful dog, just phenomenal. And I actually took credit for training her. And and it was just that that was her personality. And the same thing here. I'm getting help on all of this. I really thought I was taking notes so that when I'm sitting on a rocking chair someday smoking a cigar, you know, on, on, a, on a deck, that I would review this, right? I had no intention of writing a book. I didn't know I was going to write a book. And then I was pushed to write the book. Um, the same thing, the automatic writing. It's not automatic. I thought it was automatic writing until three quarters of the way through the book. And I read Bob Olson's book and describe what automatic writing is. And automatic writing is where you go into a trance, you write in somebody else's handwriting, and you don't know what you read. And I was like, what the heck is that? That's not mine, you know? Yeah. Mine is channel writing, which is I go into, I, I go in, I light sage, I light candles, I bring some siesta key, I bring some of the sand from siesta key sprinkled around, I have pictures of Chris, I meditate, I breathe in, I line my chakras with a, and, and then if when I'm lucky, it's always at three o'clock in the morning, yeah. when I'm lucky, I start getting messages from Christopher. So the first time this happened was the first anniversary of his crossing. So I'd been, you know, you know, uh, experiencing some, uh, trying to meditate, trying to stay close, going to mediums. But this was a year, I, and, and I didn't realize that what this was. I just thought, okay, I might be taking notes. And then, you know, it continues. And it continues this day. You know, two or three times a month, I'll, I'll get woken up at three, come in, do the routine. It's kind of like, you know, you know, you know, doing all your, you know, a, a pre batting routine where you put on the pine tar, you, do, you know, you do everything right. And, and subsequently I found out that the stuff I'm doing is actually the right stuff. I didn't know it. I was just kind of stumbling through. So you got to figure, you know, somebody upstairs likes me and it's kind of leading me in the right direction. Yeah. So I got to show you something. Cause before the show, I pulled some cards. Okay. So this was the first card and okay. it says spirituality inner peace and open heart will shine the light of truth okay the accompanying cards is a little light shines it's a heart right two uh leaves and then candles of peace yeah. so candles were very important he, he your son told you to go out and get new candles he did he didn't so like it, the it's amazing that these cards you there's, know, not, there's nothing there's nothing amazing about it well it, i know there it's is routine now yeah you know, for you and me yeah but for those who are losing, I mean, that was random pull, random pull. No, yeah. You know, I got to tell you, it, it, it's funny, Frankie, um, 52 times 
I use the term uh, amazing in my book. <laughs> yeah, you were going to write it. I did. I didn't <laughs> put did. it in the book. Actually, the editor took it out. But what I want to tell you is 52 times I've said amazing because it's a perfect description of what we're dealing with here. Yeah. You know, a perfect yeah. description. Of, you know, he's been around me all day. You know, I was, I got to be honest with you, going into the office this morning, I wanted to tie some stuff up in the city before I came back for this. You know, I was listening to music. I felt him with me. And I just missed him. And I just had a mini breakdown where I started, just started crying and, and let the tsunami flow, you know, and I did. And, 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 and then I got on with my day and that happens. And, and that's worth the, worth the price of admission. You know, that connection is going to continue forever, you know? So parents who lost kids, you know, they're not gone, but it's not the same, but it, you know, when people tell you time's going to heal, you'll, you know, you'll never get over it. So you know, did you retire from your job? Are no. You retired? No. I'll okay. never retire. I got kids in college and <laughs> okay. I, I got, I, I like to spend money and so does my wife. And by the way, this is a long weekend, right? This is, you, you got Monday's a Martin Luther King Day. Oh, is King it? Day. Yeah. Okay. So what it's Mon that? Martin Luther King Day. And oh, it, okay. And so, I'm in Canada, sorry. Yeah. So the <laughs> office is closed. I drive well, myself closed crazy. anyway because Trump closed everything. So. Right, right. Well, the office in my, yeah, in my, in my office in, in, oh, is closed. Office. Yeah. So, you know, banks are closed. I drive myself. It's not, it's too cold to golf. There's really not, you know, I don't have any hockey games to play. I drive myself crazy over long weekends. So the thought of, of, of retiring is, is long, long, long way away. You know, plus I really love, I like what I do and I love writing. I love connecting. I love connecting with teen kids yeah. who have some issues and I love connecting with parents who've lost kids. So I got a feeling that's the next. So best. that's the next, that's the, that's yeah. the, the purpose. You know, I think, I, so. I, I think that purpose always hits us. My book back here, one of my books, Midlife Mojo is about um, finding our real self. Boot. Now I hear, now I hear the Canadian. Boot. <laughs> in, in, in midlife, like this is midlife for you. And this is when I think we emerge from our socialized self to find our true self, our real self and our real purpose. And usually our purpose has something to do with helping other people. Yeah. So I love that you're, you know, you're focused now on helping other parents who have gone through, you know, such a tragedy as yours. Um, and this is another realm that's open to them, another way for them to connect that they maybe weren't open to or didn't think about or weren't sure about and you know you definitely have proof positive that it that it's worked for you now especially guys yeah especially guys it's somehow it's okay society is okay for women to get together and support groups and women yes you know, but for a guy you're supposed to suck it up buttercup right yeah and, and that's just so not drawn yeah don't you know what i mean yeah. it's it's okay you know i'm you know i'm okay telling everybody in the united states canada that you know I had a little mini meltdown today and it's yeah. not all that uncommon. Yeah. You know, it's not going to stop what I do, how I act. Well, you could tell that you love big and hard, you know, yeah, it's, it's like you just fall and you fall and that's it. You've, you're done. Right. You're right. It, and, and the minute, the minute the nurse handed me Christopher in 1991, we were connected. The yeah. minute, you know, and it was, it was over. And, and I got to tell you, I thought I was far too selfish a guy to be a good dad and I was wrong. You know? you know what? And I believe that that's why we become parents. We learn how to become selfless. Yeah. And I think it's a prerequisite. I really do. I think a lot of people should learn how to become selfless. And you do that by becoming a parent. Yeah, Usually, if, if you're a good parent, you have parent, no other hopefully. choice, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Let's talk a little bit about Will and Carolyn. Um, okay. How are they coping now and how are they feeling because I'm sure now that Chris is gone, even though you loved him and whatever, there's more emphasis on him today than there probably was when he was alive. All right. You touched on a couple of good things. One is it's really important, and I did it in the book, that I respect their grief, like Sally's, as their story. Right. right. But that's a fair question. And, and the same thing about, you know, have they been involved with mediums? They've both been exposed, and that's their story. You know, yeah. we've gotten some great messages. I think Chris was a big personality. You know, he... Uh, he gets that from his mom's side of the family, I think, you know, but he was a big personality and he was a handful. So there was always, you know, he took the air out of the room as a kid. So there was always a focus on Christopher, right? And we sent him to boarding school, which, which now I'm on the board of, it's called Inbalance Ranch Academy, which helped give me my son back to me. Those people come in for the golf outing, the Barrasso's, I love them. They're shaping, there's 40 kids at, a, at this Inbalance Ranch based on the 12 steps of AA and recovery. And they're just wonderful. And there's nothing better. Every year I go out for the fundraiser 
and I take the 40 ranch kids and we find a spot either in the chapel or, or in a, in a conference room. And we just, and we just talk to each other and nice. we deal with each other. And, and, and I talk about my experience, strength and hope. So, so Chris always took the art of the room. A lot of focus was always on him. So the issue is really that it was like, Oh my God, you know, the emphasis was on him when he was on this side. He's on the other side and friggin' dad still writing books and meditating and now talking to groups about Chris. So that's, they're coping with that. They're aware of that. They adored their brother. I will tell you, he was a wonderful friend and a great son and a good pal, but he wasn't a great older brother. You know, and whatever it was that caused that, he was, you know, their relationship was healing, but it was, you know, so, but, so there's a gap there. You know, they, they adored their older brother and didn't sure. get enough back. But Christopher has told me more than once, it's okay, Dad, I'm on it. I'll take care of it. Yeah. You know, and, and a conversation I had with my daughter today, she said she felt Chris around. So yes. in their time, I respect their recovery. I, I respect their road, whatever they take, you know, and, uh, and I, I adore them with all my heart. You've got some great looking kids, I got to tell you that. Aren't they good looking? Yeah, once they again, really are. my wife's side of the <laughs> They are definitely. Now in the book you wrote about that um Christopher said Will needs to go get a blood test. Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. He was, you know, there was a period of time and, and you were you know he Will was this phenomenal athlete, state ranked uh lacrosse player, wonderful hockey player. And when when Chris crossed it, it just hit him real hard. So, you know, we didn't and he was lethargic and we didn't know if it was physical, it was and 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 grief. And it was grief and it was a little of both. And he had had it, but he had some kind of infection. And so we didn't get a blood test. But we took him to the doctor, got infection. He's, he's fine. He's, he's, he's kicking butt in Boulder, doing great. Um, you know, and I'm so proud of him. So yeah, he was, and Chris was just telling me and he's continuously, you know, he would say, dad, forget everything. Just love him. Just support yeah. him. Just love him. Don't, you know, don't be a tough guy be his dad, you know, yeah. love him. And so I, I listened to my yeah, old, treat them all a little boy. differently. Yeah, so I listen really to my boy. Yeah. yeah. So he's in Boulder, Colorado. What's he doing? He's going to University of Colorado at Boulder. He just started his second semester freshman. Nice. And I love Boulder. 19 years old. Oh, he loves Boulder. I don't think we'll ever see him other than vacations in the Midwest again. I think he's hooked, you know. So oh, it's for Christmas, he got yeah. some uh, some ski goggles and gloves and a coat, you know, and he can rent skis for a couple of years, you know, or he can go to work all summer and get his own friggin' ski. I know you're from Chicago, but there is one good piece of place in Boulder. <laughs> yeah, well, eventually we'll check there. it out. Good, good. Yeah, you know what? I remember I'm from Buffalo, so all yeah. the Chicago style deep dish pizza, I don't get, you know. Yeah. It's not, you're a chicken wing man. <laughs> oh man. Frank, every year when we go to Canada, we before we we I go in the day before and we go to Frank and Teresa's anchor bar where chicken wings were developed. Yeah. And and we eat, bring a hundred up to Canada. I'll tell you a cool thing about there. going up there is I went to school at Fredonia State. And it's uh and so my buddy Fitz, who plays in our band and and and, and I'm having dinner with him and Brad and Rick tonight. And and he had told me about Lilydale and I had written about Lilydale. Yeah. I always thought it was up in the Finger Lakes or somewhere. Yeah. No. I go online, it's 45 minutes from where I grew up. Yeah. It's, so what I'm doing this year is I drive to Canada because I love it. I leave at three o'clock in the morning with some Red Bull coffee, books on tape, and and a whole bunch of cigars, and and I drive the 10 hours and and this time I'm going to go in two days early and to spend a couple of days at Lilydale. Cool. The mediums do some interviews. Get some fodder for the next book. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm a drummer. I Come on. Join the club. You know what? The guy who owns the company, I'm, I'm a mortgage broker. He plays in our band. He's a drummer, but I'll replace you. You're more famous. You know, I'll replace <laughs> Fam you I don't know if I'm famous, but. Uh... You, know, you know what they say? You know what the best part about being a drummer is? Well, you're you get not. To, well, you get to hang around with musicians. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Nice one. Yeah. Usually they're homeless, but not me. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So the next book, where do you, where are you going? You know, the next book? guess what the next, the next book's name is uh, now what, uh, you know, because, you know, I had this fear and remember, this is all brand new to me. I don't know the rules, right? I'm are you developing your own intuition? Like, do you want to start to become a, no. a reader? I don't want to know. Just... I don't want to talk to your dad or uncle or you just only want to talk to your kid. That's I want to talk to my kid and I don't mind, you know, eventually talking to my dad my brother jerry who was like a hero to me that i adored i wouldn't mind that part 
And I'm told by mediums that they're there all the time, but they yeah. step back because they know the intensity is for me with Chris. So no, I, you know, people say, and if you want to do this, you can develop it. We can, I said, I don't want, I want to connect. I you want really to learn hilarious, you know. <laughs> I want to connect with my kid. You know, I don't want somebody's Uncle Charlie coming into me and it's like, hey, get, get out of here. I'm you're talking to my group kid. And you're like, could you people go home so I can yeah, talk every, to my son? Everybody move along. <laughs> everybody move <laughs> along stupid? now. You don't get it? Get yeah, out of so, here. So there's a lot of stuff and there's more mediums. See, I started this book and, and here's what happened. I had uh, in, in, in February of 2017, so it was just over a year after Chris passed, and I had been keeping all these notes from mediums. And my, my wife was in the, in downstairs with her brother, Ricky. They were just talking about Chris, you know, which we all the time. And you know, what a tenacious kid. He'd play hide and seek, and you'd find him. And there was no break. It was like hide again, and he'd take off, and he'd go hide again. You'd find him, and he'd go hide again, and off he'd go. And this would go on for days, you know, if you'd let them, but hours. So they were telling that story and I just got the message hide again in my head. I walked upstairs and started writing the book. And, and so that was, you know, it was February of 17. So I continued the book. It started January 3rd of 2016 and I concluded it January 3rd of 2018. So it was two years of the snapshot in time. Now, the messages, the, the, the channel writing, the messages from mediums, all that's continued on. And I've continued with notes and I've got a whole new file this thick that's in, in the file cabinet for the second book. And there's things I want to know about. I want to know about thin spaces. I want to know about why Sedona, you know, I do know why Sedona or, or you know, is a vortex. That word screws me up. It makes people kind of you know, push back. But they're thin spots. There's thin places where the veil between the two worlds is thin, like Siesta Key. It's the, you know, the Siesta Key is the well, quartz the crystal that. sand. The yeah. energy causes that to be a magnet. Well, I want to. I want to go to Lilydale. I want to do that. I, and There's that's a book. There was a book by uh, what was her name? I interviewed her. I can't remember her name. God, it must have been ten years ago. I interviewed her, but she wrote a book about all the, all the places in the world, like all of the spots in the world. Where, well, maybe I'll cheat and take them and, and, but, but, and use them as cliff notes. No, yeah. I mean, that's what I want to experience. I yeah. know what it's like to experience my son closer than the air on beaches in. Yeah, you said the beach was a quartz, quartz sand. What was that beach? Well, you know? that's kind of cool. That's yes to key. Here's the funny story of that. My, my oldest, dearest pal, Alan Conrad, um, we grew up together. We met first year of freshman year in high school in 1971. And Alan and I wild and we played ball together. And, and I found spirituality through, recovery he found it through the loss of his first wife debbie through cancer and then we've always been close but we really connected on that spiritual level and here's and if you'd have asked guys in high school you know would these guys be sitting around talking about spiritual yeah. teachings so we got real close to in that so i went to his wedding he married a, a wonderful gal sandy a couple years ago and it was 2016 so i hadn't you know it was in the fall i had gone right to after the uh, the imbalance ranch fundraiser and so I went to his wedding and I always sneak out of everything. It's called the Irish goodbye. You know, you just, you kind of smile, wave, and you just walk. When we're in Canada, we're trying to leave a party. My wife will be waving and touching people and you never get out of the house. I said, don't make eye contact. Just get out. You know? <laughs> so you wait, like my husband. Yeah, you wait, Irish too. <laughs> yeah, it's the Irish goodbye. You wait for the outing and you wait for the opening and you go. In this case, I was outside having a cigar with a couple of the guys from the wedding. And one of the guys called an Uber for him and his wife. The Uber came. I opened the door for the wife and just kept going. Jumped in my car. I had a GPS and I put, you know, beaches. And ended up on a beach. And I didn't know what beach. I just knew we were surrounded by water. So I go to a beach. And I felt this incredible closeness. Almost a year later, Al's in town. And, and it was during the hurricane. And he still came to the golf outing. And he said, well, we're not worried about Siesta Key because the Indians consider it sacred because the sand is quartz crystal instead of sand. Yeah. And I was like, what? So on the internet, research checked out. And 2,000 years ago, the quartz crystal came down from the Appalachian Mountain. So you can walk on Siesta Key at 100 degree weather and your feet don't get hot because wow. it's crystal. So I've got, you know, I, 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 you know, I have some right here. You know, I, last time I was there, I put a handful in my pocket and I, and I just okay. feel them. So that's a real... You know, for me, that's that's like a booster on your cell phone, right? Yeah. That's those places that's make it even better, right? So I I want more. I want more of that, and I want to tell you more about that. You know, because what's more important than that communication? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And Sally's writing a book. 
Sally is writing a book and, and Sally is a perfectionist, you know, so she, she, she literally, you know, you know, lives and a dies over every sentence. One. Yeah. She's writing about the raising, you know, of a, of a handful of a kid, you know, and, and the things that go with it, like the stigma. Did of you being, say he was an indigo child? Is that what? Yeah. I had no idea what that meant. And the yeah, best thing is Nan seen. Yeah. Yep. At the time I do now. And he yeah. very much an indigo child. And she said to me at that time, she said, they're going to tell you that he is ADD. But all that means is he answers to a different dimension. Mm -hmm. And dang, if he did, you know, so she's writing a book about that. And, the, you know, you, if you've got a wild kid or a kid that has an occasional trouble, you know, the, the stigma that that presents from, you know, society. Now, me, I grew up in an Irish Catholic family. We were, you know, I always never trouble. cared. We were always, <laughs> neighbors never talked. You know what? We never had to worry about the neighbors telling our parents because they didn't talk to us. They hated us. Yeah. We had 10 kids. It was like the Rowdy clampet. Kids. The clampet showed up in their neighborhood. Yeah. And, and wild and dogs and football <laughs> games in the front lawn. So, you know, I never cared outside my family what anybody thought. And, yeah. and that's been able to serve me well in this endeavor. People say, sure gee, don't you think, aren't you worried what people think? I've never cared what people thought. You know? yeah. Now, the one exception is if you lost a kid, I'm, I'm, I'm praying, I'm begging you, please, you know, look into this. You know, yeah. It doesn't have to be me. Look it up online, find somebody, ask for referrals, go see somebody. They're not gone. You don't have to live with that void in your life. I yeah. promise you. So please, I'm begging you do that. And I don't ask the time of day from a clock, but I'm asking you if you lost a kid to reach out. Yeah. Yeah. That, beautiful. Yeah. I hope they do. Um, so this was Chris's last incarnation, supposedly. Well, you know what? Subsequently, I've heard that he may want to come back and raise a family, you know, oh. be a father. He never got to be a dad. And I've been told in this that lifetime or at any lifetime. That he in this lifetime on my side with him and yeah. there's and if, and if the question between soul and spirit, I got a really good answer about the question between soul and spirit, from uh, Bob Olson's book. You know, so if anybody look into that, um, and the and the example real quick is that your soul is like Lake Michigan or whatever body of water, your spirit is a wave from there. So all the spirits are connected to the soul and all the souls are connected, but each spirit is individual. So my fear, honestly, and, you know, laugh if you will, was what happens if we cross paths? What if he's coming back while I'm going there? That would really stink after all this work and heartbreak. And I'm told that, A, it doesn't happen. He'll always be, his spirit will always be Chris McQuillan connected to me as, in his soul family. Yet his soul will send other spirits back. You know, they say lifetime. even when you come that there's still a little piece of you over there. You don't, and I'm, I'm told there's... Eight, you know, when this is from Jen Weigel, from who's been exposed to a bunch of mediums. She said, "Look, you know, early on, relax, sport." You know, she said, 80 years, our time is like the minimum they can make it back on here." And yeah. she said, "You don't have 80. You don't. You know, don't worry about it. You're you're yeah. not gonna you're not gonna pass." And he's actually said to me, "Dad, I'll be here when you cross. It's a promise." And he actually says to me, "And you think it's going to be sooner than it is? It's not. You know, but I'll be here." Yeah, you keep saying, he's, I, I'll be here for you. I'll be here. And you're like, oh, my God, am I going tomorrow or what? Yeah, no, I know. That I, you know, I, I, but you know something? Is it you comforting know, I, now to you to oh know what it's like over there? Absolutely. Have you ever feared death? No, never feared. I, you know, never? Never feared death. You know, the, I, I fear no man. The only person I ever feared was when my sister Marsha was my boss in Washington, and she scared the hell out of me. But I never feared death. But I, but I wasn't comforted by it either, so I, I just didn't know. I've got to tell you. Are you still a practicing Catholic? Eh, kind of, a, you know what, I'm, I believe, I, I'm fine with Catholicism. Um, you know, I've had my issues with some of the issues that everybody has. Sure. Um, I, I, I'm okay with some of the dogma. You know, I, I, I believe that Christ is a favorite son. You know, I don't think he's the only son of man. I think we all are. Yes. You know, and, and he believed in mediums and he had said about his reincarnation that he will be here for a while and then he'll be gone and you won't see him. You know, so he had talked about dying and coming back, you know, so I believe that some of us are evolved you know, or some of them are, are more evolved and are, are evolved masters. And I think, you know, he was the favorite son and he's, you know, and so I'm a big fan of the guy, um, you know, so I, I got no issues with Catholic church and I don't think they got an issue with me. You know, we, we, I'm curious uh, um, if, if you have ever had conversations about consciousness, about, 
third to fifth dimension with Christopher about no. how people are nothing like that. Okay. No, I mean, what, what I've, I've talked to uh, a, a lot of it is I, I'm not asking him questions in mediums. I've done some Q and a, but uh, like somebody, you know, but a lot of it is just what he's reporting to me. Hey dad, this is amazing. It's beautiful. It's blues and greens. You know, it's like a, you know, it, it's like a warm summer breeze. Always, never, never, never cold. You know, it's like what he told me is our side is like boot camp and his side is like uh, a bungalow on Maui. Now, you know, my boy's there and it's a bungalow on Maui and, and Jimmy Buffett music. Sign me up. Surfer dude. Yeah. You know, if it's time to go. And I got to tell you, you know, I'm in no hurry. I still got, I got two kids. I got this book. I got a wonderful wife. I've got things to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. But if I got tapped on the shoulder tomorrow, Frankie. And the, and, and, and the good Lord said, hey, Joe, it's time to go, pal. I'm okay. You know, I lived a life beyond my wildest dreams, and I get to spend the next one with my wonderful kid. So, you know, how bad can that be? But you got work here to do. I got a lot of work to do. You know, yeah. I, I'm you not ready. Now. I'm not ready to go. I have more of a mission now than I probably ever have. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. I yeah. Do. So what is that going to look like? Are you, did you set up... Anything? Have you set up like, uh, I don't know, um, some kind of a organization or have you done well, anything like that? Are you doing something I, like that? Is there a yeah, plan? I, yeah. Here, you know, the, the Greeks always say that man plans and God's laugh. Sure. You know? So here, the, I've got a wonderful publicist. Her name is Lisa Hagen. And, and here's the funny thing is that I, 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 after I finished the manuscript, I thought, now what do I do? So I started looking up people who are in this venue and, and, emailed a couple of them, got to Lisa's name and stopped. I mailed her a part of the manuscript and then I mailed her the manuscript and she said, you know, I'm just too busy. Uh, you know, I get 300 manuscripts a week, but maybe I can finish it by the end of the summer or fall. And, you know, that just wouldn't do, you know. So every once in a while I'd say, hey, how we doing? I think I sent her some chocolate. My buddy Rick has a family business called Glamour Chocolate. I sent her a box of chocolate and, uh, and she said, coincidentally, I had just, she said, I had just said that we're, we're out of chocolate. I wish we had some chocolate, right? So, so then- To the woman. <laughs> yeah. And she calls me back and says, or emails me. And she said, you know, you're tenacious, but you're nothing compared to your son's spirit. I like chocolate. Yeah. Okay. It's out of swing. I've got a box right here going out to you. No, I'm dead serious, you know? And, and so, and it's, and it's like high quality, wonderful stuff. Nice. So Lisa, and so I figured, you know, if I send her this chocolate, it'll open the, the conversation. Well, she said, look, your son's, you know, keeps pushing me. So I, I picked up, I read a couple chapters. She said, for such a serious book, I'm surprised how much I laughed. You're a funny yeah, guy. You are a funny guy. Yeah, yeah. Funny how? Like a clown? No, I'm kidding. You know, so she said. You're both funny. You know? Yeah. Oh, he's hysterical. So then she said, you know, when I read your book, I loved it. I want to represent it. I kept telling you you weren't such a smart guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what he told me recently, and this was great. I think he wants to make sure that my head doesn't get big. We're getting a little bit of exposure from fine people sure. like you. And Patrick Barrasso finished reading the book and, and heard some of the podcasts and some of the stuff and sends me a, a, a tat who owns In Balance Ranch and a therapist working for kids. He's one with kids. He's I one love that play. That he's play just, sounds amazing. He's just, you, it's a, go see it. Go out to the fundraiser and, and, and march with me. But he's just, and they, by the way, they just built a, uh, Student housing because it's it's a ranch, right? The kids Where is work. It? What? It's 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 in uh, uh, it's in Hachuca, Arizona. So it's an hour and a half south of Tucson. Arizona. Yeah, okay. And and it's and the offices are in, in in Tucson, but the ranch itself, which is this wonderful old dude ranch, um, the kids work on it. They're shoveling, you know, horse manure and. Give him a name. I, lo I love to. I love to to on my Frankie Sense show. I'd love to have him on that show. Okay, you Patrick Barrasso, In Balance Ranch. I'll send it to you as yeah. contact. Yeah. He's a he's and his wife Betsy are amazing, and it was a perfect fit when he went out. Chris went out there. They just built a new bunkhouse, and it's called McQuillan Manor after Chris. How's nice. that? Nice. Oh, right, that's right. Awesome. Touches my heart. Right. So, yeah. I know what that's like. I sent my son to hockey school. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, a military I, hockey school. <laughs> all right, yeah. You know what? You, you, he loved it. I, right, right. It's amazing how far they can push themselves. He stayed yeah. on as a year after that as staff yeah. and working with kids. And I still get contact from kids at the ranch who knew Chris. And and you know, I, yeah, I, I think that's really great the way you guys embrace those kids and embrace oh, those friends. That's beautiful. Thirty kids at the, the thirty people at his uh, grave. 
this couple of days ago on the third. Showed up. Now, these kids all have jobs in grad school, but they all showed up and they all come over. And a bunch of them will be at the Wilmette Theater tonight. They're all, they're like my kids now, except I don't give them any uh, allowance. But, I, you know, I love <laughs> each and every one of them. I really do. Yeah. You know, they, they and, you know, he's still part of their lives, which is amazing. They, and, and he, Chris said to me one time, Dad, they're not moving on. You know, they're, they're getting on with their lives, but they're not forgetting me. Don't worry about that. You know, he, half these kids got tattoos with either Chris's names, initials. That's incredible. Yeah. Like, you know, why do you think that he made such an impact? I mean, most people don't. I mean, you, yeah. you go through yeah. life and, you know, you got your friends, whatever. Like, I look at my, at my eldest son and, and he's got the same friends from, you know, practically, you know, grade six to, to now they're all parents, you know? Right. And, and it's absolutely amazing how they've all stuck together like glue. Right. And me, I traveled around the world like growing up and I don't have a friend, to, you know, I, I wouldn't know anybody from high school, let's say. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it, it's incredible. And that, that he made such an impact with so many people, you know, maybe knowing, you know, somewhere that his time here was short. But what, what was it about him? I mean, do you think your other kids made that same impact? You know what? I think everybody has their own light, right? Their own light and their soul. And I don't know why. Um, all my kids are special, you know, yeah, of course, this, of course, this kid, yeah. but this kid had something and it wasn't just because he's a neighborhood kid that died, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now he's the type of kid, let me give you an example of type when he would leave when he was in fifth grade, he'd leave with an, one of the kids, uh, classmates to help him inject his, his, uh, insulin. You know, it was, he was, he, he was that kind of kid. Got a you know, big heart. Boys, the boys from the frat, you know, and, and this thing looks like a scene out of Animal House, but it's all love. It's amazing. And they said, you know, Chris wouldn't let you not have a good time. And what did Sam write in, in, in the song, Stay Put? You know, he wouldn't let you have a bad time. You know, he was, that's what he brought. He just had yeah. a spirit and a kindness. And, you know, devil may care. You know, it's, I would get a text saying, you know, they were on their way to see if the Buffalo Bills were playing a free game because of a snow out in Detroit. And so there were, you know, 10 of them in two cars on the way there. You know, that was all him. You know, it's like, oh, my, what are you doing next, kid? You know, but he was one of these guys that, that, that passed through this lifetime and, and leave uh, an impact. You he know? drank it in. Yeah, and he did it in 21 friggin' years. Yeah, it's amazing. It really is. It's sure. Yeah. I mean, three years in a row, we've had, you know, 30 kids, 30 people at, at the grave in, in the middle of the day, January 3rd. In, in the Midwest, you know, and, and it's cold and, yep. and, and it's, and the love kept us all warm. I promise you that. Incredible. Yeah, it is. So when do you think your next book is coming out? Well, you know what? I got to get this thing, you know, launched and, and kicked in gear. So I'm dabbling with it now. I've got all the notes like I did the first time and I've written a couple chapters and I'm really loving. And I, this is going to be a lot of fun because it's going to allow me to research those places that we talked about. Yeah. And I've talked and, 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 you know, kicking in new mediums and, and, and new, new things. And this is great. You know what I love? You, what, what you started your show with. And I, is that, uh, and this is what I think about my path. The, the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Cause you open with that frost uh, poem and, and, you know, uh, and that's how I feel. I've still got a lot of work to do. And at the end of the day, I get to hang it up and, and, and go spend the next life with the, with my kid you know? Well, hopefully all your kids. Well, no, I don't want eventually. them coming anytime too soon. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, they'll all be there. It's yeah. So eventually. Good. Hopefully. Well, like you said, you know, you, 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 you're, well, you're in a soul group with, with, you're usually in a soul group with most people that you're family. talking to. Yeah. 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 A lot of family, a lot of family. My family comes together all the time. My old man, I've, I've, I've been in meetings with Andrew and he said, you know, Chris is right behind you with his hands on your head. And he just kissed the top of your head. And he said, your dad's, your dad's next to him. And, and, and the old man said, I got the kid. Don't worry. Don't worry, Joe. I got the kid. I know you'd love to see him. I'm trying. That's the, I, I don't know if that's denied to me, if I don't know the rules well enough. But that's what I, well, like you said, do I want to, you know, fix, uh, improve my, my, my gifts so that I could read other people? No. I want to improve my gifts so that I have this, I can hear them so I'm clear audience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, clear senses. I can well, smell you, you them. You can't hear them. Well, I hear them in my head, you know? Yeah. Well, that's where you hear them. Yeah. Hear them. But I, but I haven't, I'm trying like heck, I'll go to his grave and sit there and I'll look into the woods 
and I'll envision him coming through when he'd come off an airplane at American Airlines, and I'd meet him right there in the, in the terminal, and I want to see him that way. Yeah. You know, so I'm working on that. You know, maybe next time we talk, I'll say, hey, you know, here's the poster. You know what I mean? I'll let you know, but I want that. But I've been told that maybe that maybe that's not for me. Maybe mine is this way, but you know what? I'm just going to keep trying, you know? And, but by the way, I'm not greedy. I've gotten this amazing gift that was just literally a gift from the other side. And so I'm grateful for that every day, every hour of every day. And you know, some people, some people would, would say, he's staying 21. He's staying 21. Yeah. And, yeah. and he's going to look like that way because that's what he's going to be. And right. that's, that's kind of, in some ways, it's a gift for those who went early. <laughs> they get to stay young. Right. Well, but if you went older, you get to st you come back, I think, when you were in your prime anyhow. I got to yeah. tell you, I like me better at 62 than I ever did at 25, right? Really? So I think, yeah. yeah I'm a much know. better guy. <laughs> I like I'm to be much, 25 again. Yeah. You know what? I, I screwed up a lot, you know, so I was Yeah, real, I did too. But yeah, I would yeah. like to, I would like a do-over. My husband always yeah. like, would you like a do-over? I go, yeah, man, I'd go back to 17 in a heartbeat. Not me. Yeah, was, but, but with I this, loved high school, you know, but, but it was a lot of work being me, you know, <laughs> it took a lot of work. So I'm, I think when I... I don't I, like being 62. It's like, you're too old now. I feel, I, you know, I just feel like for women, I think we get invisible. Uh, we become I invisible. Think it's, I think it's different. And you, yeah. you know, my wife's in her mid fifties and she still takes my breath away. You're gorgeous. Love I got to tell you, I... You know, I like who I am at 62, you know, yeah. you know, you know, with, you know, all gray hair and, 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 and a few extra pounds and, but I still play hockey, Frankie. So it's okay. You know? Yeah. Hockey. And I miss that. See, that's one of the things I mean, my kids are grown. Nobody's yeah. playing hockey really. You know, I, I, I said to my husband last week, I said, why don't we adopt a kid that plays hockey and I can be a hockey mom again for a while or something. <laughs> you know what I said this when, when William finished lacrosse and went to college, I said, yeah. Are we going to have to find our own social life? <laughs> you know, because yeah. it was all we, we were either at lacrosse tournaments or rinks, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and I and I will tell you, I really miss that. I do. Yeah. But there's something special about hockey players. I got to tell you, the weekend that Christopher, we buried Chris on on, on January eighth, and that Sunday I was hockey, and I didn't show up because you know it was the weekend. Yeah, obviously. And uh, one of the guys, Xerxes, brought out Buffalo because I grew up in Buffalo. But Buffalo Sabres jerseys for both teams. And in the locker room, they passed around a bottle of whiskey and each had a drink. And then they all put on their Sabres jerseys and played against each other, honoring my kid. Nice. That's what hockey, that's hockey players, yeah, right? Yeah. That's who they are, you know. Yeah, God bless those guys. They're all, I'm, I, you know, they're still part of my life. Toronto had a heck of a lacrosse team, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really good. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, we used yeah. to go all the time. Yeah. The rock. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I miss those days, but this is good, too. Yeah. This is good too, Joe. <laughs> this is what we got, kid. You know, this is what we got. Make what the got? most of it. Yeah. You know? Well, I want to wish you all the best on, on the talk circuit, on, on, you know, getting your book out there, getting it to number one, hopefully, getting to meet, more importantly, parents who right. need to hear your message, who are suffering. And, you know, you, know, you can alleviate a little bit of that for I them hope, by, you know, showing them a, a new, you know, a, a different way. You know, it's, it, it is a reality. It's real. You know, it, it is it, real. And, and I, I'll say this in all humility. I've read a bunch of books on this subject and this is, this is the best book I've ever read on the subject. And, and as, as I was telling you before, Patrick Barrasso congratulate me. And I got, I got a message from Chris. I said, Hey dad, you're just carrying the mail. You know, so in other words, stay humble, pal. You know, what we're giving you this. You know? Yeah. So, you know, I had a friend who, who, who came and stayed with us. His son had committed suicide. Oh. Um, and, and he came to stay with us. He'd never read a book in his life. Now, I was a, I'm a metaphysical hypnotherapist as of well. Of course. And I had a book. The book was laying out Many Lives, Many Masters by Dr. Weiss, Brian Weiss. I know it. And he read that book. First book he ever read in entirety in his entire life. Never read a book before. And he said, oh, my God. He read it from, you know, right cover to cover. And he said, that helped me so much. I had no, she had 84 spontaneous, like this woman in this book had 84 spontaneous, you know, um, hypnosis events talking about her lives, eight or 84 lives. And uh, it helped so much just to know that you'll come back, that there's another side, that you're not dead, the soul lives on. 
And if you don't want to come back, I've been told my yeah, old you don't man, have to. my old man raised 10 kids, worked 40 hours a day or 40 hours a week, you know, 80 hours a week, you know, and they said, he's tired. He's done. He has no, oh, he should have come back as a woman of, you know, some rich guy or something. <laughs> or he might just hang it up. The old man deserved the chance to just hang it up, you know, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and be with my family on the other side, you know? So, yeah. Um, but I agree. I go, you can come back. You don't have to. You don't have to. But this is, or, this is a training ground. This is, you know, where you get to learn and do stuff. And right. you don't have to. And, and, you know, I think it's pretty exciting. But there are options out there for people, you know, to ease into this world, is all they'll yeah. say. And, you know what? I will tell you this. When I go on vacation, first thing I do is jump on the internet to see what, where, where do you eat? Where do you go to the beach? Where do you go to a cigar shop? Where, where, right? So I'm telling people, look, we're all going. We're all crossing over at some point. Yeah. You may as well try to figure some of this stuff out. And I think my book's got a little bit of that travelogue of how to figure out what's going on on the other side and more on the second one, I believe. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. Best, of, awesome. best of luck to you. Facebook people, we're, all, we're out of here. <laughs> hey, send me your home address. I'll send I'll you some that. candy and a couple of books. And please send it to your friend who read many books, many masters. And tell them where they can get your book. My book is at Amazon.com. It's uh, in print. It's in um, it's in. Uh, uh, Kindle. Kindle and it's uh, Audible. .com, and the Audible just came out, the Audible version. Oh, which did you do it great. yourself? You know, I did not. And it's and I listen to books all the time. I'm very audible. That's yeah. what I do all the time. And scared the bejesus out of me that, that I might not like it because I most of the time when I hear an author do it, I hate that because they're not professional orators. This guy just nailed it. I loved okay. it. You know, if they do the movie, tell Treat Williams, get a hold of me. I yeah, he'd be great. He'd be, yeah, I, see, I see Treat. I see you. Yeah, I can see that. But I think you should narrate the next one. I, I think, you know, it's authentic. There's passion. You're the dad. It would have been great. Yeah, but I, listen, this is audible. It's pretty special. Send me the address. I'll send you this. I tell will. me this guy's name, too, so I can put it, in the, so I can inscribe a little, little something for him. Which one was it? <laughs> the guy that many lives, many masters lost. Oh, Brian Weiss, yes. Brian, yeah. yeah. I'll send something, you know, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Take Thank care. you, kiddo. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.